Chair. I thought you were taking over. Now we need the agenda. All right, so our Zoom is working. Jeannie? It's recording. Perfect. All right, good evening, everybody. This is our uh, regular meeting for our Academy uh, Community Center Building Committee. Uh, for, we'll do attendance from our committee tonight. We have Ann Kelly. Joan Walker, myself, the vice chair, Dave Sperling, Joe Valentine, our chair, and AJ, last name, Miller. Miller. Um, and then is anybody on? Joe uh, Paradiso or? No, not yet. All right. And I assume we have not filled our open position. That's correct. All right. So we still have an open position on our committee. Uh, moving on to item two is the Pledge of Allegiance. We will do that tonight. Yep. Right. And we'll move on to item three is approval of minutes. We haven't had a quorum for our last two meetings, so we are backed up on our minutes. Um, Gene, are you able to put them on the screen or do you have them or no? No, okay, go now. Um, first item is the meeting minutes from 425 of 23. I'll move to approve. Second. All right, any discussion? Nope. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All good. All right, moving on to the minutes from 5 2 of 23. Move to approve. Second. And any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All right, those are approved also. Let's go well. And finally, the minutes from our last meeting on May 8th of 2023. Um, anybody have a chance to lead them? I wasn't here, so I can okay. move to approve. But all I'm seeing from I'll, I'll move. I wasn't here either, but I, I have I read them before I got here. So if we want somebody who was here, and second. <laughs> all right. All in, or any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stay. All right. And aye. Aye. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to item four, our chair chair comments. Um, I don't have anything on my agenda. I don't know, Joe, do you have anything? Yes. Yes, I would like uh, um, if I have the, the agenda. Yes. Um, since um, the, uh, the, one of the reasons for putting the community center advisory building committee on the, uh, on the agenda tonight was to get there. Uh, get their views and, and their, their uh, have been a part of the discussion on the uh, state of the drawings from the uh, from two a m. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that uh, two a m s be moved from the uh, number fifteen on the agenda to number seven, and that uh, that be done contemporary contemporaneous to. Academy Center Advisory Committee update, so that we could have a, a uh, discussion, uh, a full discussion of any uh, of whatever the architects presenting QAM presents, and we can all, both our committee and then Bill, and then if there's anyone on uh, from Bill's committee, can all be part of that discussion. Oh, Austin and Scott. Are here. Oh, Austin. Oh, and Austin and Scott also, as uh, as a town representative. Yes. So we have a general. Um, a general discussion as opposed to uh, bifurcating the discussion. So again, motion to move uh, QAM to uh, the top of the list, whatever number that happens to be, uh, and contemporaneous with the, with the Academy Center and Scott and, and allow Scott and uh, uh, Austin to participate. Second. Anybody? I'll second. Uh, any discussion? Just move on agenda items around. Yep. So it'll be up to item. They're going to move up to QAM will move to seven. 
Okay. Good. So you're supposed to say I approved. Oh, approved. Okay. No, no, you're supposed oh. to say. <laughs> so seconded. Oh, 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 all, like all in favor? Aye. 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 Now it's approved. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on to liaison reports. Anything, Al, that you want to discuss? Uh, or I'll take questions. I have nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Sorry to put you on the phone. That's fine. Um, public comments. Is anybody online, Jeannie? If people are online, there are no hands raised at this time. All right. All right. Now we're going to move on to new business. So we have moved up QA and M's um, update up to item seven. Tom, you are up. Um, so tonight, I I don't have a lot to present this evening. We've made a number of the small changes that were discussed at the last meeting. I think between the last the prior meeting and the last meeting, we had made a lot of progress design-wise, sort of gotten on the same page. We had showed an alternate site plan. We had made a compromise regarding um, distribution of some of the spaces in the office. Um, and we are now focused on um, putting the schematic design set together. Um, so that we can get to a point where we can do our first um, scope estimating and get to a point where we have a better understanding of where we are budget wise. Um, and I think that's going to be a critical point where we start talking about scope and issues and tasks and you know what is the shape of the project going to be. Um, we've also had success getting all of our consultants now on board. Um, the last was the site civil engineer and the um, landscape architect. Um, those are all under contract, so they're all moving forward towards uh, schematic design phase and documentation. Um, Austin in the town helped our team get back into the building again. We're still doing a fair amount of site visits to you know, verify existing conditions and document. Um, those conditions so we can, again, put scope together uh, more clearly. So we are just moving forward. Um, I, um, at the last two meetings, uh, we didn't have a, a quorum, so I was not able to get approval on some of the proposals for the outsource work. Um, in an effort to not Find up the schedule too much. I have directed them to proceed at my team's risk. So I, I hope we're going to have that stuff <laughs> on the uh, agenda this evening and uh, get some action going to discuss going forward. But Connecticut Water and Earth Consulting? Yeah. Yeah, the water, the water testing and the board. The board. Yeah. Um, and I did, Dave, you did receive, I believe, the location correct, the borings and the test and structural work. Um, so that's underway. Yeah, we just asked for a copy just so we can kind of see where the borings are going to be. It's just a preparation. Um, so that's what I have tonight, and I'm available for questions. Perfect. Okay. Do we have the current version of? The schematics that we could put up on the screen, just in case. I mean, if uh, I haven't, I haven't been here, so is the is the current version available that we could? It's on that thumb drive right there. I do have a slightly modified version of the plans there on this thumb drive, um, and uh, just reading our minds. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You would like to help. I want to. I'm going to share screen. Yeah. Put it up there. I think Joe is going to try to join. He's texting me, so if you see him pop up. Does it matter which one I click on? 
Um, no. Uh, I think one is a PowerPoint file and one is a PDF file. So PowerPoint file is fine. Um, and if you scroll down, the floor plans are um, further down. So Joe, if you if you so Joe and Joe, you, yes, it's since some, some of us weren't here. Can you just briefly go through what one of the stances? Pardon? No, did you say some of us weren't here? <laughs> <laughs> If we, didn't have a quorum, if we didn't have a quorum, that means I wasn't here and someone else was. You should be able to present for that. The slide should be Is that online? Yeah. There we go. I think Joe is trying to get in as a panelist. After you're done getting this organized. <laughs> You mean five? Yeah. And a colleague octopus. Yeah, a few arms. All right, hold on. So, Joe, while we're waiting, I'll just mention one thing. So, when we saw the overall site plan, mm -hmm. we asked if there was a possibility of, of moving the parking lot more to the west. We could move, potentially move the place gate closer to the building so it wasn't mm -hmm. separated. So, that's one of the updates that. Um, Tom had made on one of his draft sheets. I think that was something we thought we were right. so yep. he did, I mean, he did sign over. <clears throat> and you want to move the uh, change slides, go to the next slide, right arrow maybe. There you go. Um, so this was the original concept site plan, Joe. Um, I can go over here, right? And you can see that we have this patio that's in between and connects the two parking areas. And then the parking area was tucked with a little drop off. And then the playscape is here. The next slide shows um, right arrow. You can actually click the right arrow on your keypad plan as well next time. Um, we revised this concept at the back of the site show that the playscape that was here would be moved to here and then the parking would have a loop and would provide actually access for a dumpster and um, dumpster access. So this layout actually works pretty well. Um, I think it yields one less parking space, but we could potentially find that um, somewhere. Um, and then in this configuration, pardon? In the church, right? Yeah. In this configuration, we put the parking area back to its original configuration. Um, so you could see the site and how this um, space would be developed if we left it as it was and just, let's say, resurfaced it. Um, just as, you know, envisioning some potential cost saving measures to the whole concept. I don't think anything is lost programmatically, um, you know, leaving that as it was. Um, I have a question for Al and Bill at this point. Is that we've been told verbally that our responsibility lies within the walls of the building and that anything that's exterior is going to be another project. Um, I think what we're talking about today is under your jurisdiction. I think this is parcel. Things in related parcels, I agree, would not be under this committee jurisdiction. But, um, Tom, am I using the right word parcel or? For well, the footprint to describe the, Yeah. I think this is all within your jurisdiction, what you're looking at there. Is, is that your question? question? Are we sure of that? Because, I mean, that's a considerable amount of money. Uh, that we could be using inside the building. Oh no, this this is part of the project. Yes, <laughs> is this part of your budget? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be built. <clears throat> nice try. <clears throat> While Tom has that <laughs> slide up, there could be a double advantage to putting the playscape where he has it, assuming that um, 
all of youth and family services offices and and the uh, youth development spaces on the third floor, if that comes to pass. One of those rooms on the third floor, we had tentatively suggested could be a <clears throat> drop off area for mothers and young children and potentially expanded into a young person's place space. If that's the case, then that play space could be relocated to the bottom floor right here, which is immediately inside of the playscape. So that would allow for young people to move from the playground to the interior if, if that were to come to pass. And I think one of the advantages of moving it was that we know from having baseball games there and t-ball games that kids congregate to there. So we didn't really want them to have to go across the parking lot to get to the place scape. So and close I, to the building. I would hope that the plate would the place scape be fenced in because of the cars coming through. Yes. Yeah, you could probably just put like a four foot For safety, fence yeah. around it or something, right? Just to segregate it off. Mm -hmm. Little bollards or something to block cars. Does that make sense, Austin? <laughs> Tom, yes. can, can you point to where the playground is now and then where you want it? The, the playground currently is right here. Yep. At the where this parking area is shown, and the idea would it would be moved to against the building. It would be a new playscape. It would be reconfigured. Um, it wouldn't be necessarily just a physical relocation of the existing equipment. Um, it's fairly, you know, complicated undertaking in the sense that it, it's its own design project. Right. It's, Isn't it's, there funding to replace that playscape, Austin? There is, yeah. So there's also, uh, there's also a stairway, an outdoor stairway right here, so that for young children and mothers who did not have physical limitations, they could, if again, this were the young people's play area inside, then that would make an easy transition for mothers and young children. Right. And so the question then becomes from a financial standpoint. Um, would we ask for CIP to move that playscape dollar figure into this budget as an add on because? It's already in the CIP budget. The movement of funds will the figure funds. out once you guys finalize. Once we finalize, right. that could yeah. be, that would be. It's not well, CIP, it's ARPA. Oh, it's ARPA. Yeah. Well, what we don't want is we don't want to have to value engineer this out because we've run out of money. And if we have the money somewhere else, right? Right. Keep in mind, this Al is all parking for the playscape. So there are corresponding projects yeah. and this patio supports the playscape as well. It's all a part of the playscape project. Uh, then the roadway in the front will be the responsibility of public works, right? So we do that. So we'll get their funding for that. So good. <laughs> um, so anyways, so um, here is just a slightly updated floor plan we continue this is a lower level floor plan we continue to make um add layers of detailing um notes um, regarding scope of work uh, creation of a gallery at the lower level um, we've removed this big opening between this classroom and the corridor um, we have a smaller opening there it still serves as a multifunction space but, um, and it still functions the same way. Um, what was the reason we moved that? Because it was envisioned as a connector, a connecting space that allowed the hallway um, to be the, it allowed the hallway to sort of merge into that space. Yeah. Um, but structurally, um, all of the T's in the basement sit um, sit on that wall, and it it's pretty low. So we'd have a we have to open that up, put a huge beam in. I think it's just a really big undertaking for relatively low return programmatically. Um, 
and there was comment about having a gallery for hanging space. So by putting that wall back in place, now this lower level corridor can become more of a true gallery space. Our is gallery it, how space. big is the opening? Is it possible to at least make it double wide or something? Uh, uh, yes, it's something possible like that. that that's okay. the case, but um, that's that's a possibility. Right now the corridors are 12 feet wide. The um, and then this plan shows as it is one of the things that we've done um, slightly different is we created a connecting corridor between these two rooms um, and in between the storage areas and what this was this needs to be a mechanical space for the geothermal um, fields. But that also provides a second egress from this room. This activity fitness room is very large, and we need a second way out of that space. So we would exit through this space and out that um, out this door, or out that stairwell. So the current design is current layout that is not Madison Youth Family Services. In this current layout, it is flexible space that can be used for all different activities, but it's not dedicated Madison Youth and Family Services. Based on the last meeting, um, we discussed the offices of Madison Youth and Families moving to the third floor, just the office space, and then Madison Youth and Families using multi, multi-function or flexible space throughout the entire building based on a you know, planning and programming scheduling um, service to meet their small group meeting and the large group meeting um, tasks. And Scott reported on that at the last meeting. Um, that allows the core of the building at this lower level, which is really buried. It's the only space in the building that I would say is buried, has no perimeter access to be um, storage and flexible um, storage for all of the different programs in the building. But that the one that's against the wall to the, the this top one. wall. Yeah. You know, the, the flexible space to the, the top the top where the Here? Yeah. That has light though there. Those that are, does have those natural have lighting. Okay. And that is one space that Bill just mentioned might be an ideal candidate for the young Young children's program, yeah. they would have access to the elevator and the stairs. So if the playscape is here, you could visually observe the playscape from that same space, and you would have direct communicated access from the elevator and the stairs. The next floor, right arrow, awesome. The next floor, you can see we've started to put some furniture in this space. Based on the last meeting's conversation, we revised some of these um, opening partition locations so that we have opportunities for signage, but we made that space more open again. Um, we added some viewing windows into the gymnasium. We added pull-out seating at the gymnasium and shifted the athletic floor configuration. Um, we made some adjustments to the stage. We made the stage bigger. We added the folding operable partitions between the multifunction spaces and the main, uh, what I refer to as the recital hall um, um, performing space. Are they, are they at the same level? Here, yes. Those, those are at the same level. Everything is at the same level here except for this stage. The stage is up, and we've actually, we're gonna, we've decided we're going to completely reconstruct the stage, and we're going to lower it. We're going to put it at about somewhere between 12 and 18 inches above the floor so that we can have direct step access from the recital space and have ramp access at the back. And it'll make it more functional. It, right now, it's very high um, relative to the shape and size of that room, and it'll get a whole new um, proscenium opening. We've redesigned, we've, we've kind of can reconfigured the core. We have janitorial space on all three floors. We have um, electrical panel space on all three floors stacked. And then we have non-gender 
um, bathroom facilities on all three floors stacked. Um, here in orange, you can see the offices for youth and family services. And then the central cafe space remains as it is. Um, no, next. Beach and Rec there. Be I beach and Rec, I'm sorry. Beach and Rec is orange at this level. Thank you. Austin, you're still going to have space at Surf Club and space in this building, right? Yeah, for summer months at Surf Club, yeah, where okay. it's pretty important to be down there. Yeah. Sure. Bill, do you have any any uh, comments on the on the on this uh, this floor? And you're from, not from you, but from you and your committee. Yeah. What the, uh, the sense of the committee? Was I'm okay. Have we gone through the entire building yet? No. no we haven't gone through the entire building yet. I'll hang in there. It seems like my office space is staying the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very pleased. Um, one, tentatively, we had thought that um, this space here would be divided, that this section here would be the teen designated room, which could be available during the day for other people. And then back here might be um, a technology room for people that need access to um, IT and computers. One, um, Tom, I think you said there are windows here into the, between the cafe and here? Yes, we are putting some doors, yeah. as, doors there. As much as the teenagers have asked for their own area unsupervised, uh, I had a good chat with Sonny Scarp at the library. She said, when the teens are there after school, they absolutely have to be supervised that they've had numerous incidents with unsupervised boys who make uh, very rude and inappropriate sexual comments to the girls there and the female staff. And uh, they've had to pay particular attention to teenagers. So, um, Sorry, kids, you can't have a free-for-all. We have to have some visible access. So thank you, Tom. That, so that, that looks very good from uh, the Is there a, a folding divider in that large room? Originally, we had a folding operable partition between the two spaces, and we've changed the concept to have two pass-through, two sets of doors. Um, this is an exterior existing bearing wall that we didn't understand okay. we didn't know that originally um to open that entire wall up would be a significant effort it's easier to create um two fixed openings so those rooms could be used together um if those doors are open and you know a double set of double doors two sets of them are wide open um but um it'll still give a lot of flexibility to use it two different ways also based i'm you know, picking up on um uh, the comments about the computers and IT, the building will, computer rooms, um, particularly for senior centers, community centers have become sort of trite and the entire building will have Wi-Fi service. Um, anyone can use a computer at any spot in the building. We'd be able to turn any space in the building into a computer room. If you were going to have a fixed computer training room, we probably would use one of the smaller spaces so that you could have four to eight workstations. Gone are the days where we would really have a classroom with 24 people on fixed computers. Um, now the, the purple space, how, what's the size of that? So this space is probably about uh, it's probably about 24 by about 40. So it's a big, it's the entire courtyard okay. of the building. Okay. And that courtyard will be two stories. So the plan is to infill the floor of that courtyard up to the first level. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be a two story open. Um, we're going to cover it with a clear story light and it'll be two story open you know, pre-function space for the whole building that the upper level will look down on to. That sounds really good. Just a quick affirmation on your idea for the Theodore Recital Hall. That coincides perfectly with the public's request and the um, activity group's request um, for a little expandable space to the right and left. Um, and I like 
your idea for the um, stage fits in perfectly with the requests. Uh, and over and over, we heard from participating groups uh, a sprung floor for that stage if possible. Tom. Okay. A wet floor? A sprung floor, uh, I don't know exactly what it is. No. Resilient it's, it's, it's floor. It's absorbent. So for dancers, they said it's a safety issue for dancers and elderly people who are right. out there. But that depth of stage is not going to hold a lot of dancers. That's the thing. That'll be for the little well, kids, but the one that you want to look at for potentially also having a floor, and you can roll those in as well, would be the main stage. Why don't we call it the main stage in the gym? So and then the recital stage. Terminology wise. Well, perfect. It's going to hold whatever group, whatever size group it can hold, and that, you know, you can't, right. you can't the put 30 stage, people there. You, the, you can't like put the main people. stage can hold a real dance recital. I just, I just did one this weekend okay. in Clinton, and the depth is needed for that. Okay. The, the, right. the little ones are more for, you know, having maybe a string quartet or okay. maybe a little bit, but the, the depth of stage is pretty. You need to have the capability to dance, and I don't think the depth on the recital is is is, is that deep. Correct? How deep are we? Um, we have the flexibility to make that as deep as we can. Okay. Um, we can we can project that prow a little bit, but you're correct. It's not going to be very deep, and it's not meant to compete with, with the you know stages. that. Right. Exactly. It's a different space. It's a different experience. Right. It's great for having you know. Um, a speaking engagement or a, a fundraiser for um, a, you know, a group that may go to another space um, and have speakers there or awards there. Award dinners are great there, too. So I can see that, especially if you're lower on the stage. Yeah. They do small improv groups or something, you know, just whatever shows up. Kindergarten. Kindergarten play. Joe, uh, looking at the space now, the way it's going to be. Uh, it's a, is theater in the round a, a possibility? Uh, no. Because then you get you, you triple your, your seating space. Theater in the round, is, there's very specific things that go with theater in the round. So I would say no, you're going to have a, you know, you're going to have a main stage. It's going to, with the fold out um, chairs, we'll be able to hold more than the recital. And well, I'm talking about in the recital. The recital area, theater in the round, you would have to build a stage in the middle. It would have to be a temporary stage. Keep in mind that this existing space, an existing stage, has an existing proscenium opening right. that's made out of concrete, um, structural concrete. So we plan to just sort of turn okay. that. I've been to I've been to plays that are level. That there, there is no stage, and the and the and the, the seats are. Are around it in four different, in four mm -hmm. different areas. and it just reminded me of that. Um, in looking at it now, that it's you know it's open, but it's, it's it could. Out, I will take your word. It's, right. Well, the thing is, in order to do a theater in the round, then you've got to have the whole lighting scheme, the capability right. to light theater in the round, and that's that's, that's a different. bigger yeah. And to have the sound and pieces like that, so that's a little bit okay. bigger of an effort. If you want to grid that ceiling, that would be fun. <laughs> I know. I'll get. We're gonna get some donations. In. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, Al, you're up. Yeah. And then, uh, Tom, before you leave this, um, I find your color coding very helpful, in understanding what's going on here. But I want to ask the committee members when it's time to present this to the public. Do you think that the colors for the gym and the recital hall should be green? Yes. Yeah, because it's it's control. community usage for space. Yeah, yeah. we got there. Yeah. Even though Beach and Rec will be controlling the 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 monitoring, but well, they're going to be controlling who goes where anyway, the whole full schedule anyway. So it's not like Beach and Rec's going to hold on to the recital or the gym space. It's more of yeah. I like the fact that the offices, that's the offices, and everything else is for the community, so to speak, is in. Uh, that makes sense. We can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we go back, Tom. Yes. Yeah. I had a again. I missed some things. You're going to have to put up with this shit. Um, <laughs> the um, the um, uh, gym floor has that been decided? It has not been decided. Okay. 
And part of the reason is we would like to make it a, a full traditional resilient wood floor, but that requires a fair amount of elevation change. In order to do that, we have to create a ramp area either in the gym or in the corridor. We don't have a lot of space for that. Um, so we're looking at different flooring systems. We did, we did an exercise space in Willimantic that is a, um, it's actually a sheet vinyl floor. It's a wooden sheet vinyl floor that has a resilient pad underneath it. Um, and that may be a good option for this space. But again, we haven't committed to anything, so finish wise. Just one other thing, Tom, that I don't think we spoke about, but Bill brought it up. If we're going to have a team area, are we, are we thinking that we're going to have like a pool table and that sort of things in there? Is that um, something that was discussed in your findings or? That, that was our general idea. And of course, it would be available during the day for all citizens if uh, seniors wanted to go in there. Pool, ping pong, or hot knock hockey. What, what do you have in mind? The space would oh, accommodate yeah. all of those types of functions. Yeah, no, I was thinking that if we're going to use part of that green area there for that purpose, we may want to be able to, you know, close off the rest of it, right? He's got it. He's got doors between. Oh, you do and, Yeah, this still all will be closed. Yeah, yeah, I can't see from here. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. And then finally, on the third floor at the last meeting, um, what we talked about was that this portion of the building was originally and always has been um, allocated to youth family services, but we're proposing relocation of um, youth and family services or family services or youth services at this level, just the offices. At one point, we had proposed moving the multifunctions or moving their de moving dedicated meeting space up to that level. Instead, this area would remain as multifunction meeting room space, and Scott would program throughout the whole building as needed and available for his programming space. Um, but this offices would be here because there's a good. Um, administratively it makes a lot of sense for them to be in the same place we changed the core at this level to include uh, gender neutral bathrooms um, more private bathrooms at that level the arts and crafts room is going to stay as an arts and crafts room and then we've added a kiln kiln room at that level it's a really good space for that because we can vent completely directly to the roof um, and then these stay as these prime corner space of the building stays as multifunction spaces. And you can see off to the side is the floor plan for the roof penthouse level, which would be cleaned up and used as, again, another multifunction meeting space. Um, but that space would not be handicap accessible. Can I, can I ask a couple of questions here? Of course. Um, to my knowledge, this layout with Madison Youth Family Services on this, uh, you know, occupying the additional space on the second floor is not an approved drawing. That, to my knowledge, that the committee has never voted to approve this. That is correct. This is still a concept. Um, I'm moving forward. With the concept drawings, but I'm not producing construction drawings or documentation of that time. The cost to fit out this space per square foot would be comparable to the cost to fit that space out in any place else in the building. So I didn't feel like at this up until this point that was a critical path item, but at some point, um, it is my understanding that this committee would have to approve this general concept plan so we could move forward with developing. And I guess at this point, since when I read the notes, the you know, there, there discussion went both ways. And I guess I'd like to hear, I'd like to have the committee, since we do have a quorum, uh, you know, I'd like to get a committee sense of, of that 
allocating that additional state, space to mass and nuclear family services here instead of making it use the space. So originally that was one community space. There wasn't offices or what it wasn't broken out. And I think that um, I was initially, you know, wanted to make sure that um, that the first when he when Tom showed the first slide, um, the first time he said, like, just wait off, don't complain yet until we get to the third floor. And I think because they didn't take the premier spaces, what I think of the third floor spaces um, of the uh, the corners and the and the art and things like that, I think this works well. And they've basically given up some oh, some space and said we'll be flexible in using the yeah. Yeah, so they, they Youth and Family Services has given up some space for some continuity because um, they had more space originally on the on the um, lowest floor. And I think that the, you know, the lower floor is going to have now all community space period, which I think is also storage. very, well, no, it's there's community space too. It's not just the storage and community space. So that way there, it's all community on the lowest level. Second level is all community with a few offices for Beach and Rec, and the third floor has the offices for youth and family, but also has the um, some community space as well. In the prime location on that floor. Uh, in the prime location on that floor, the the sun and the you know where you're going to need the sun for the art and things like that. That's why we thought that this was a good compromise um, two meetings ago when I was here. <laughs> I'd like to present an opposing view and. Well, this is this may not be my personal view that I don't think we can, I don't believe that we can go forward with the, this plan without at least looking at an alternative plan where the fourth floor or the third, the upper floor has only the original space uh, allocated to Madison Youth and Family Services and the rest um, community space as it was originally planned. That the Push back from the community of building up building offices instead of community space um, might be substantial, uh, and I, I I'm not sure that and, and 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 I'm sure that we need to consider that uh, a viable second set of uh, a viable second set of uh, drawings that show that as all community uh, shows the original plan for Madison to have family services. On the upper level, and the um, uh, with the rest of the big community space. I think with the redesign with the uh, playscape outside that window, um, that makes it um, much richer for community space to be at that lower level and to have that like the little kid drop off, like you were saying. And I think the design actually works better this way. And I think we can, I think the public would, I, I don't think you're going to, I don't, we'll get some pushback. You're going to get some pushback no matter what we do. There's going to be people who don't who say, we should be tearing it down and putting a parking lot, very with some bathrooms. I, I um, think that the counter argument that's going to come from the community is we're building Madison public, Madison town offices with funds that were devoted to the community. No, because during the presentation, there was always going to be Madison Youth and Family Services and Beach and Rec in this building. That right. was always part of the plan. But not there. But not there. But it wasn't. Well, but, that was, that, things, but, but the right. only thing I would mention is that those drawings that were given to the public to vote on for the referendum were concepts, right? They weren't set in stone. So right. the public knew that. Beach and Rec was going to move their offices in because they're going to be a facilitator of the building, right? And Madison Family Services is going to move in also from next door because they need more areas. So the public was knew that those two entities were moving in. To where exactly they were going, that wasn't really set in stone. I don't think at that time, other than there was some office space shown. So, so I we're, mean, we're 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 going to be asked to set them in stone pretty quickly. Please. But but that's okay. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of what our, our, our job is here. Too. AJ? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I, I see where you're coming from. Though. I think from a presentation perspective, when you showed it to the town, they're going to see we're building the third, the third, second floor for them. That's what 
when you look at this image, this that's what it looks like to me. I understand there's community space there, and that's very valuable community space. Um, I think there's we're going to probably deal with the budget, right? Like we've been talking about this for a while, and I think it's going to be important for Scott and Austin and this this committee to look at the entire building when we're value engineering, and all of us are going to have to contribute, I think, to that when we get to those stages and we start going through that process. So I like the idea that they're together. I think we can sell that image. I'm actually more worried about the the town coming back and saying, why does everybody need a private office? And why do they need so much space? And like I I, I heard what you said and it made sense to me, but the community's not gonna, you're not gonna talk to everybody in the town. So oh, I think oh, that's I think that's part of the that communication plan that we'll have to have. And if there's if there's a if there's some compromises that are made on both sides, I think we've got to tell that story too. We can't just say you guys got whatever you wanted and we sacrificed everybody else's um, spaces for for their needs. It's an important part of the town, it's an important service, but I think we've got to make sure that it comes across equitably when we were going through that process. I think the presentation is going to be really important. And just to point out, we're we're already giving up some of what was out our allocated space. Um, and we're giving up control over group space. That was that was our compromise. As uh, yeah. Tom laid out his his reasoning to put us on the third floor, but we took we had four offices and we had allocated group space for us on that lower level. So by moving up, what we all we've done is moved up the offices to the top level and we've given up what would have been our own designated group space. So we've given up raw square footage and we've given up control over our group spaces, which if you'd ever heard me talk uh, at, at previous meetings, that was a really big and very important to us. And what makes us a little feel a little bit better about that is, well, we've got beautiful community space now, or additional space, and you know we've got a great relationship with Beach and Rec, and I think we can work out programming uh, scheduling a lot better now than maybe we have in the past. So when we're talking to the public, I don't have any problem standing in front of people explaining as to why we pick the number of offices and their sizes. And the design and the purpose, uh, I, I'm not too worried about that at all. People will take it like everybody knows, like it's the public will be what the public is, but I do think we can explain this pretty well. So, so and, and I'll get to you again. Joe. Um, hey, Joe had a question. Remember, at our last academy leadership meeting with Peggy and, and the principal uh, committee chairs, and Al, we did say that we're going to hold a public information session. That will happen. And our leadership team is meeting again on June 4. So then we might be able to schedule a public information session where we'll invite the entire public. And your, to your point, Joe, I think it would be very valuable to, to present these uh, diagrams to the public and, and see, what, see what the response is. And I think you were. Yeah, I'm looking at the document, the supporting document for the referendum, and it specifically says that with the family services offices and programming space, approximately 6,000 square feet, beach and rec offices, approximately 1,000 square feet. I'm wondering how that aligns with this vision. Me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, um, it's actually a little bit less. We've got the family services in, I would say, 5,500 square feet approximately, um, because the offices for family services in that classroom, when we put them in there, it, it actually works. They're more, it's a more efficient layout than the lower level. So their offices reduce in, in size. Um, and then they, they're dedicated, their dedicated space for large and small group meeting has actually been pulled out of the number. So um, I could give you the exact square footage number of their offices um, and um, 
what their total footprint is, but the concept now is that they would program um, throughout the entire building with the multifunction spaces as opposed to having dedicated spaces for those rooms. So um, Scott worked with Austin program the spaces around community programming to use their meeting spaces. So that has really come out of their program and become flex space. And then what about speech and rec? Speech and rec is um, about about the same. It's a little bit less because that classroom bay is a little small. I think it's well, um, twelve hundred. It's about the same. So I could give you that exact number. Um, I have to get back to you, but essentially, they've always been allocated, even in the concept design, that classroom bay, and we were able to again efficiently, you know, put their offices in those spaces. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and the diagrams in our outcome report have the approximate square footage for each room, especially if you look at the fold out. I'd like to recognize, well, Joe Paradiso. This question was answered, it was regarding the square footage. And I think one of the things we talked about two meetings ago was the fact that it's actually less expensive to build a wall than it is to construct a cubicle now. So that's one of the other pieces that we were. Um, I'm just saying, I, I'd like for the, for, we were talking about, you know, building all these offices rather than cubicles or whatever. That's your only alternative. It's know. still surprising me that like with all the HVAC and like extra electrical, extra hardware that it's actually cheaper. That's you can take surprising. that sort of tongue, a little bit tongue in cheek. It depends on the specific layout configuration, the amount of space, but office furniture, depending on what you're buying, and it's energized office furniture can be very, very expensive per workstation. And well, the other challenge with, let's say, open space office furniture is that you don't, you don't, it's very difficult to maintain the sound separation requirements needed, let's say for HIPAA requirements or consultation spaces. Um, and so in this allocation of space, particularly if they're floor, we think it'll be easier to renovate the space with partitions up to a certain height and then float a ceiling in it. And um, it's, it's essentially gonna be an office fit out to the tune of $50 a square foot or whatever that number is. It's the last thing I'd like to discuss is whether we, because this is a change and because the outcome with the public is, you know, maybe unknown, um, that if we um, request a second set of drawings that, that, we, that, it, that puts Madison Youth and Family Services, at least at the third level on its, on its original square footage and, uh, and reallocates the... That would be more space though. That would be more space for them in the in not on the not on the, the upper level. On the upper level, it would be less space on the upper level and more space on the, in the lower. In You're the saying source. split it now between the lower level and the, the So go back level. to the but we have the original drawings. I I think that I I I think that if we show two different drawings, I think you're gonna have a problem. I, I don't I don't think we should show two different drawings. Okay. I think we need as a committee to come to we, we as a committee we will come to one set of, of approved drawings that's we know that uh, but well i think but what is the what is the alternative if if you the committee can't come to a decision or we take the committee we take the take it to uh take it out to the to the public and, the, and we get considerable pushback from the public well the one thing think is we, we don't out, we, out a lot i don't think i didn't think we we're out of disagreement that much on it as of the last meeting, but there was yeah. much missing. Much and I and I was I was a really hard negative on moving everybody to third. And the two meetings ago, I converted over to this was a good design because of the way the rest of the um, the spaces were were done. So that was my thought. Yeah, I was in the same boat. I was pretty against it, and then after Scott presented on the, the benefits of it, it made more sense. To me. So. I don't know how much disagreement we have. It might be good to check. Yeah, that's that's what I was, and, and because I just read the notes 
and and it doesn't doesn't indicate that there's a switch. It, oh, sorry. Yes, I yes. I, I, I yes, but uh, I went to the dark side. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, to be fair, I think two meetings ago, you know, when Tom presented, Scott gave his input. We all gave our input. There was a lot of information that that Tom and his team gathered then we had to meet follow me the week mm -hmm. after right. he made a lot of these changes but nothing changed from our comments from that meeting two times ago right so he kind of put it all on paper and this is what we have now i don't think we want to have tom progress two different drawings we want to move forward with a plan so he can continue on so we have something to give to the public because time really isn't on our side to be honest with you Right, we want to get this progressed so we can get this to the town so we can <clears throat> finalize our, our plan. So, yeah, the only area I think concern is if we get the value so, engineering, we've got to make cuts. well, but it's got to, but it's got to progress it so we can get it to the estimate. We, so we can find out what that number is. So, so, we got to move, yeah. And Joe um, also supports the design concept as we well. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank I mean, you, Joe. I guess the one thing I would want to ask while Bill is here, and this is supposed to be kind of a combined discussion here. Is there anything in this report that you have that Tom has hit in his design that we need to be aware of? Um, I'm very pleased with Tom. It's clear to me as as I listen to Tom present his design plans that that he has read our report and incorporated it, incorporated the information in there. Uh, there's still details to be worked out, but I, I think one prime example is Tom's inclusion, if it's if it will fit in the budget, it's a kiln room. We had, out of 2,000 respondents, 734 want to take pottery lessons. So if possible, uh, that's a high demand item from the public, and, and Tom incorporated it, and I appreciate that. Um, I just want to make sure there's nothing missing, because I want to make sure that your committee and our committee are on the same page, right? So um, we go to the public, we're all you guys one team. Comment? I'm satisfied with the drawings. I think yeah. the the space is, you know, what everybody understood it to be. Um, and keeping things multi-purpose is, mm -hmm. makes makes it easier to, to program. Um, the staging in both the, um, the smaller room and the gym is happening. Um, making the gym floor new is happening. Um, those are all things that were important to me and the folks who um, give input for sports and arts. And we have a lot of a lot of input on physical activities, athletic sports. The final analysis: this this whole community center will succeed or fail based on the degree to which we meet the needs of the public. It's going to be their building, and um, if as long as we have made a bona fide effort to address what we've heard from the public, I think we'll be okay. Uh, we, we can't afford to ignore that. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to a public information session at some point in time. I think that'll be very helpful for all of us. There, there is, um, I'm remembering from some of the conversations when we did the focus groups, the importance of the HVAC system. So like when we're bringing in, um, uh, whether they're like theater folks or, or performing arts, the uh, it was critical to keep in, in consideration to make sure that those rooms could be cooled appropriately. I think when you get to the design part, that that was a, that that kind of stands out to me. Um, I think the dance floor stood out, and also the um, the uh, speaker system, sound system, sound system. system. For, for a lot of people with hearing impairments today, so that was a critical uh, requested feature: is uh, wireless wireless sound system that can go to a hearing aid. Well, the good news is, Tom, you have an acoustics engineer on your staff, right? So. We're in good hands. Okay, I I talked to uh, today before the meeting and reading some of these comments. I, I wasn't sure that we had the level of agreement in the committee that uh, that we needed to move forward, but it sounds as though we do. So uh, I, I wanted to be the contrarian in this. I asked I asked for permission. I I I I I I I I Ask permission if I could be the contrarian and say, wait a minute, we have to look at this. We, have to, we may have to, we may have to look at other options. This is everybody on the committee on the same page. And it sounds as though we are, which is very good news for the committee. And I think very good news for the town 
and uh, very good news, news from the Madison Youth and Family Services, which Scott doing oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're, you're, you're an integral part of the community. Do it, we want to be sure you get everything you need. I just wanted to be sure that we had agreement across our, our the building, that, the committee that has to make the decision. Listen, I, I respect the process. Everybody has to work themselves through this. And if, if we did go back to where we're out, we get the space that we're allocated, we were happy with that. So it's not the end of the world to us if we got the space configured the way it was originally conceived. I'll admit that I, I like this better because it keeps our staffing. And for the folks that would be added to that third floor, their their jobs are a little different. They're not counselors. Those are prevention staff workers who, who interact with youth in a, in a different capacity so that they're out in that hallway and they have more access to things I think is really really perfect and benefits the community because that just allows us to do a little bit more co-programming. Um, important too, when we get to the point of talking to the public, we're giving back our building. So all of our programming comes into to Academy. The town hasn't decided what to do with 10 School Street, but there's a little building outside with 2,300 square uh, additional square feet that could be used to the purposes of, a, of, of whatever else we're doing with the community center. And we're giving back space that we had in Memorial Town Hall. So when we talk to the community, I think it's going to be important for them to point out like the big picture, <laughs> you know, like what the idea was, what we do, and and how we're configuring everything. At that point. And then Ann's point, we're, you're getting what was in the referendum anyway, by square footage. So it's we're not increasing. So no, that's right. Just be reconfigured. So. Bill, any further comments? Thank you so much for, uh, well, I, really, I really appreciate this uh, joint concept of uh, multiple inputs and from, from, uh, from everyone. And uh, if, if we can uh, continue this kind of process, as I find it very encouraging, so thank you. And, and Joe, Joe Perry, so anything more? You? You've, been, you've been pretty quiet so far. Okay. It just makes sense for us to be Okay, no problem. <laughs> just, just, just I think he's on the comment. train, he said. So he doesn't have a good no. like connection on the train, so. Uh, that's all we have. Okay. Okay. I think one last thing, I think, Tom, that we mentioned was the um, the south face of the building toward Route 1. I think you were going to go look at maybe uh, maybe a potential couple of options with that entrance way. Since that is the focal point from Route One, so I don't get a chance to. You look asked at me if we could put a, do a potential some sort of canopy or mm -hmm. covering in the building. We have not developed that yet. Or maybe potential like a patio up at the level of the entrance, or. Yeah, we have again. We have. Okay, yeah, just that. just wanted to ask. I'll I'll make a note. Of that. Okay, so I think we did discuss that. So. Yeah, we did. Last last week. Last week. Yeah. Okay. We're good. All right. Then we got, I guess we got to move on to real business here. We're trying to get trying to get Tom some money. Oh wait, Joe has one comment. Okay. Yeah. Um, a traffic study was part of the process and should be completed to communicate to the public. The traffic study will traffic exercise will be a part of the municipal approval process if necessary um yes that it's not time for that yet but yeah and when you mean traffic study you're talking about traffic study for the building you're not talking like traffic flow from the community right traffic no it's just access to the site okay. and you know Evaluating is this a change of use? Are there more people going to be here? Less people that would be here at the school? What's the impact on trips to Route One, trips to the adjacent roads, that sort of thing? Um, so the parking lot in front, or the that was now the front of the building, um, is actually a road, and I'm wondering if you said they're going to do a top layer. Um, I'll look at CIP and see when that road is scheduled to be redone. 
Uh, maybe we can time it. Also, I was asking at the beginning because if we can, right? Because can figure anything there's or a islands full, or anything, and there's a full plan for every road in Madison or a good portion of them, so we can see what the that impact would be. And that was once again through um, the capital. Yeah. What program. is the name? Is that school? What is the name of that street? School Street. Is school, school Street? street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we can move school streets in 2024 from well, 2028. That's <laughs> actually that is a good point. I, I really didn't realize that you know we proposed realigning school street and that may take a bigger effort than but your concept now you're not changing. Well, we have two options. My most recent concept is not changing it, it's yeah. leaving it yeah. as is. But our original plan was to, to move it, reconfigure it, so that it created a little more patio space in front of the building, but which I still like, but I, I, I have to find out if realigning School Street requires approvals above and beyond the typical approval process. You're, you're talking about where you're going to enter for your parking lot? Yeah. Well, I think School Street makes makes a turn and heads around the old uh, town hall. It does. Uh, right. So you're just top extending, top. you're just building a driveway off of School Street. Um, oh, it, it, we didn't talk about that. But in the front, the south side yeah. of the building, yeah. we had our original scheme proposed shifting that parking towards Route 1. Right, but you're not doing that. We're not doing that now. Right. Yeah, in this new yeah. option. Right? Yeah, I think I think the new option should stay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I mean, I would love to get more parking because I think we're going to be under capacity. I don't think we were building. getting more parking out of it. We were just yeah. getting more patio in space in front uh, of the building. Right. That's and I think that that's, I think, I think because this drawing space shows and, this and drawing shows vertical the parking road spaces. I don't know which version. But you're this gaining, was. but you're this gaining patio space between this the is building the and the existing and the original yeah, parking. And we're gaining lot patio space in, in front so like more this. because of the movement of the um, which we call it. The, the original parking area was that, which is what we're keeping. We had proposed shifting. Oh, it's not actually getting bigger. It's just no, shifting, it's just shifting, out. shifting to the I south. See. You just drew in lines where there weren't any. Yeah. <laughs> to the south, the east. Well, well south, this, this one. Is... Towards Route One, which would be east, yeah. right? Really? New York went or South Route One where it run parallel with the water. Parallel Route to the water, One, east west. Route One is north south, but it actually runs east, east west. west. So. To the, the if you're moving the groups one side, yeah, right. geographic side. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> it it yeah. kind of goes north, well, it's well, angles. Right. Yeah, because I don't know about moving that because there's that intersection there with Island Avenue, so I'm not sure how that would think we might want to leave it as it is. Think, there's a queuing area there to go out and cross to go to Island Avenue from that. And, and this is a this is a question. Yeah. Isn't there a, this is going to be a whole different project for the you know the, the layout of that of that space? I know there's a certain amount of it is in our purview, but if you look at if you look at it from you know from Route seventy from Route seventy nine sounds to you know to uh, where the church is that I mean, that whole. Section is that going to be any consideration? Sidewalk, but you, perhaps you're thinking of the sidewalk that we're already committed to building. We're committed to building the sidewalk down to room one. Um, I, I'm not sure what else you're thinking about. But, but the streetscape project doesn't extend down to Academy, does it? It stops at 79. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a yeah. block gap where there's nothing. Okay. That's right. That path. that's that's what there was some. The last time we got together as a group, uh, there was there was some discussion about or is that what's going to happen to that empty space or that block that's not included in in the academy project, not included in the street the, the, the streetscape project, and not belonging to the Memorial Town, but without and not talking about Memorial Town Garden. Well, I, or I, Memorial Hall. 
I think we meet with Peggy. Yeah. Yes. It's we'll a good time to bring that. that up. That's a strategic question. It's a great question. Uh, beyond just the academy parcel, what else are we trying to do in that historic and district? And how do we fit the academy yeah. into the that's right into the uh, yeah. bike path or whatever else? And so I have one things. more question for Tom then. What is the parking requirement that you think this building is going to need to meet to satisfy the zoning commission? And as we think about the historic district, I want to make sure that we can accommodate the parking you think this building is going to require. Because the one thing I kept hearing from the good folks in Guilford is the community center doesn't have enough parking. And right. it's, it's, it's problematic for them. It's, it's, it's not just an inconvenience, it's a problem. Yeah. Um, so Tom, I don't know the fifth on that this evening. Um, we have X amount of parking available yeah. to us, right? And I think in this particular scheme, we were going to be looking at a, a communal approach, a shared approach to parking to meet the demand. Uh, you know, based on what you have on the campus, how we can expand the parking behind it in the fixed space that we have without taking any of the athletic fields for parking, on-street parking, access to that on-street parking, um, and, you know, can it, can we increase it to our maximum ability to try and, you know, meet some of those needs? Oh, yeah. well, I, I, we don't have the ability to, or space to build a parking structure or to build more parking, um, so, you know, we have to try and we'll, we'll build as much as we can, but we'll have to try and make it work with the reality. And I think there's more parking down there in general uh, than you think. I mean, graduation is held on the green and people figure out where to park yeah. and they're not parked all over the golf ball fields or, you know, there is, there is parking. You know, we have parallel parking on Academy. We have that small lot by the senior center, the American Legion. I mean, there's, there's spaces there. Plus mm -hmm. all the parking in front under one. But they fill the spaces for the two, two churches. St. Margaret's fills up, but the foundational church fills right. up for those events. And, and, and so I would assume that, that if there's, right, you can't count on for all events, but you can count on for a lot of them. I mean, right now, like Madison Lyrical Stage has a tent, a TV break, and so people just park Figure it out. where right. you can. And, um, you know, we even, you know, if there's really a big event, we could shuttle, we could do the theater lot and shuttle people in if the The train station's a block away. I the mean, there's lots of block away. People can walk, walk too. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's so lots of parking. There's a lot of parking in the train station area, too. Right. I, I guess the question is people make do, but what does, what's the zoning requirement? That's, yes. that's, yes. that's going to be a So there may be a, there may yeah. be a variance that's needed for it. So, the so. interesting thing is this will not necessarily be a change of use. It's the same facility. It's the same spaces. It's the same use of spaces. And it was previously met by the existing parking. So if we're better in a non-conforming situation, I think that's really where we're going to be. Well, I mean, it was a school. It was a school. They bus so we're actually increasing. We're going to increase yeah, the they, they, they bus the, the people to school. Um, <laughs> uh, they didn't. This was a school. They came by buses. Sure, but the two primary, the two primary um, assembly spaces, the gymnasium, the gymnatorium, and the recital space, and the communal hall below, those would have been used for community services, and those would have had to meet the parking requirements. I mean, did you know when the building was built in 1935? <laughs> I had some horse cups. Okay. Anyway, a problem for the future. Not not, not, we'll not to be solved tonight. That's right. All right, we're good on that subject. We can move on. You want me to continue, Joe? Or you want to... Good. All right. You're still awake, I see. Okay. All right. I think we're up to item eight. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, but I'd like to open the agenda and insert an eight A above. Um, the take action um, that's in there, and it's for a line item transfer that's needed to sync up um, what the actual contracts are um, versus what has um, come through in the plan from the contingency. So, if I could request an approval to open the agenda to create a section 8A. 
and then the, this, the eight would become eight B, the current eight. So I'm going to move for that. Will somebody second it? Second. There you go. All right. Any discussion? I don't understand why we. Why we're we're move, adding. We're we adding. Move it, the court. We, we we're move. adding an item into the agenda. So anytime you add or move something, you have to. Oh, could have done that all at once. To be no, no, we do it twice. Do it twice. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move on, Joe. Okay, so we would like to propose um, for 8A that a budget line item transfer needs to move $221,000 from the contingency account ACC OVIA. 59100 to account architect ACC OVA2 53300 to cover the QAM contract value. I, and I will move that. And I will second that. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is the QAM, I guess we have that discussion, right? Right, so, so if, if you look at, uh, and I'll pass this over here. Yeah. So if you look at this top line, and these are all the academy um, buckets in, mm -hmm. in the uh, accounting system. Mm -hmm. So we're at a negative 221 because that was the original budget. Oh, we're saying because the, the price came in and over high, budget. Over budget. Okay, and so it. therefore, we're, take, we're drawing from the contingency. And if something is. So you want to draw it now to meet the obligation of our contract with QA and M. So, so we don't have to, to touch it. it. So we don't have to do it in the future. So we just pay out. So the revised out. budget represents the value of the contract. Okay, perfect. Is covered by that. Makes sense to me. Right. And I can, you guys want to see the paperwork on the, on the top line there. Because line finance people know. I know, it's true. I know, uh, I know Joe can't see it online. I think, but I think Tom will be happy with this one. So, <laughs> so, so, so our. Um, <laughs> so our original contingency is what? Value. Do that back. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. The original contingency was um, the original contingency was six six well okay six twenty eight six hundred twenty eight thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars. So we'll be taking and that contingency is for what? Just our overall like overall, overall, overall project contingency is six hundred twenty. And we're going to talk about the process after we do all these approvals. What we'd like okay. to see is the process okay. um, on the Collier's update. But anytime something comes under budget, we're going to request that we're going to do a line item transfer at that time back into contingency. And there will probably be some things that are coming under. Well, it's not going to be really? the 221, <laughs> but. Dangerous yeah. problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. Any more discussion? Too big I mean, it, we have to do it, but it's a large part of our agency, right? Yeah, about a third. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe? Aye. 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 All right. So that's approved. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Since so these are all the well, financial steps. No. Yeah, all right. So, I'm not the chair. So, yeah, go ahead, Joe. So sorry. So we're ready to move on to our items here. Yeah. All right. So our first item is the uh, legal invoice we received from Martha Kalina, and that's for them to review the contracts. Correct. No, that was for the but that was for the bond referendum. Um, that was for the bond. That was the one. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, so but this is Martha. Right. If you all take took a look at the packet that was mm -hmm. sent out. It's 50 pages, so about 46 of those pages have to do with this particular vendor. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, there are a variety of legal. Some of them say Madison School probably kind of. Yes, right. So they broke they, out. They, yeah, they to, separated. They had to separate out the bills. So Kristen and I so went to the We still got copies of the Madison School. It's all one. We got one the whole It's all one package. invoice. It's going to be broken out in the future, but it's all one invoice now. And Got they broke it. out what it was they reconciled between the school building and academy, and the total for the academy is the two thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars and eleven cents. And it's spread over several invoices. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's for bonding. Mm -hmm. Part of it was bonding. Part of it was. Oh no, that, I'm sorry. The bonding. This, 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 is, this is not bonding. This is a variety of legal. Um, 
But I thought part of it was for them to review contracts. Am I wrong by that? I thought I saw that. Let's see. Well, there's there's some grant work in here. Um, there's some work related to the Brown Andreas, which is the next thing. It's 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 it was a variety a variety of things, but it, the majority of it did go to the other. But it, it does it does have a lot to do with grants. It's, it's what we spoke about. Yeah, it's hard to right. parse through this because. They co mingled so many projects together. Yes. In the town. That yes. They have made it easy for us to. And they're going to change that for the future, just so, so you know, going, going forward. It should be separate. Separate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll be the mail. So you guys thoroughly reviewed this and you're satisfied with the point. And we reviewed it with the finance okay. department. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they're reviewing grant applications for grants that we won't get any. No, the taxpayers will absolutely great. The taxpayers. Get and that's we. We that's represent we, the yeah. taxpayers. Yes. So any grants that we get will reduce the cost to the taxpayers of the this building. The fund. Right. We just can't add. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All right. So we have to take these one by one, John. Right? We have three of these. Yes. So I'll move on item eight. I'll second. All right, second. AJ, so, second. AJ. All right, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. All right, Joe's in. All right, that was approved. So we'll move on to, now we are nine. Yeah, eight, nine, eight, eight, eight is, done. nine is more of the grant stuff as well. Correct. Right. So this is a different law firm that reviewed additional grants? This is, this is this. The law firm that the state utilizes yeah, for the grant, and we community develop right, and okay. we have to pay for that out of the four million dollars we've got to pony up five thousand. Gotcha. So this is for them for the grant that we received for the four million. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Correct. All right. So motion on this one. Oh. Okay. Move to approve this invoice for payment. All right. Second. Second. All right. Any more? Any discussion? Or any more discussion? All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Joe. Okay, so I'm going to move to take action to approve yep. invoices dated 3344 and 54 2023 um, for Colliers, um, totaling $29,034. Shouldn't we? I think you skipped over number 10. Oh, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, here I am. I apologize. Uh, wait, we approved <laughs> 430. 2023 QAM invoice in the amount of $39,167.04 for professional services. Right. And, and that is tracking right um, aligning uh, with, the, with the budgets. Correct. And that was like 20% of concept drawings, I believe. So what, why is it 39? What is this 26, 230, 56? It's on the. What 26? Is that the, oh, is that I'm looking at an old thing? Yes. Okay, that's the old one. Sorry. That was an old one. So many pages in this packet. <laughs> so there, there are actually two outstanding invoices from QA and M, but apparently only one made it into the agenda. Well, I think this is the original one that we received for last meeting. Because there's, uh, it includes the twenty six thousand from before, and they added on to oh. it because we hadn't paid the twenty six yet. Oh, okay. So it's the, so this is all inclusive. This is the total. That's all inclusive. So that was forward. Yeah. Sure. I, I don't. It's not here. The, in the packet that I've got, the, the PDF packet. is just showing five eight. Monday, May eighth. Yeah, I don't think we have the new one. So it's not in the so what you guys are reading from is not I'm requesting the packet that we got in the email. I'm reading from the May 23rd agenda that was um, distributed, not this, part of the packet. This is the agenda. We're reading okay. from the agenda. I think I, I and missed that extra. So I've got the packet, not the so agenda. You have, you have the actual invoice, right? You, but the agenda was the yes, okay. from the last. Okay. All right, so, so that's the, this was the one that they had sent. 
Yes, that's the one that we have. Okay. All right. Okay. So it is Thank you. March 31st. This is incorrect because there is two separate invoices. One's for 331 for the 26 and one for 430 for the 39. If we look on the so that's just the 26. Then we go here. So the total outstanding is actually 65. All right. Okay. So this so is I'm going to revise five. the motion. And the uh, we were going to approve two invoices. So invoice 15157 dated March 31st for a total of $26,230.56. And invoice 15249 dated April 30th for $39,167.04. We would like, uh, and I will second. So those are separate invoices. They are not. It is. It is it's, not a statement correct. that includes the previous. Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. No. It's two separate. separate. Okay. We make a motion. So I guess I'll make a motion. Yes, you'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. And then we need to discuss. And for a total of sixty-five thousand three ninety-seven sixty. All right. Discussion. What what percentage of their budget? That roughly. Where are we, are we tracking with it? Must have been around 40%, I would guess, of their conceptual design project. Like, so that ish. Is the same. ish. This, so it, this takes uh, them up to um, the schematic schematic like half of the schematic design. Yes. Because it's 130 for the schematic and then it's 65. And we're supposed to be completing the schematic design 100% in a week and a half. I was going to say that it was June. Right. Okay. So. Okay. We're going to get another invoice in next month. So. Can we do our billing about the middle of the month, and we wait for our consultant's billing, which we get at the beginning of the month. Okay. So there would be another bill that would come in the middle of June. Okay. And the terms on that are, is town pay on terms? I mean, is it? So once we approve um, here, then it goes back to Board of Finance saying now this is approved and it gets into, into their system and then, then it gets paid probably in the next. Yeah, so I'm weeks, still 45 checks on the way. So ish. All right, any more discussion? This is sound good. It sounds good for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, John, Thank I'm wondering you. if you have a chance to review these <laughs> and yes. do you um, authorize yes. us to proceed? Yeah, our, we, uh, colleagues has reviewed these and agreed with this request. <clears throat> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Joe's and I have two. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right, so now on to Collier's. Uh, I move to uh, approve invoices dated 3344542023 for services rendered totaling $29,034. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. All right, discussion? Which one? Sorry. Collier's. These are three months worth of their fixed. Okay. Like fixed fee. That's yeah. going to be every month we're just going to say. The same dollar. It's not going to be $678. <clears throat> okay. And then that that's tracking with the the, the, work, that, the work that we do, or it's the, if we it's finish the, paying, the project's not done. Well, there's going to okay. be there's going to be an increase once we get to the construction and then have more oversight. No, they have, no, they have 35 equal payments for the contract. It's all, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, just it's straight fee <clears throat> that we are paying and it's up to the value of the contract that we signed. Right. Okay, so if the if, if the timing tracks slower, then there's the potential that we prepaid for the work, right? Yeah, there's also the potential that we you know we've accelerated accelerates yeah. and we still pay still them. pay them after the end of the contract. So, okay. so yeah. it's, it's this is construction. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I can add to that as you know, their payments 
seem to be structured consistently throughout. So there will be times in the project where they have less hours expended, and then there'll be times in the project where they have triple the hours expended, depending on the issues that we deal with in construction and design and approval. So it'll the contract is 35 weeks. Okay, so that's what was signed off. So AJ is responsible. We're stuck with it. We're doing it. Collier's just can't go out of business. Yeah. We don't want to be upside down on this one. Yeah. No, it's there's a lot of contracts, so hard to keep them all straight. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Approved. Okay. Now this is you can probably go. But that's the stuff that we that was the invoices. That was the invoices. All right. So then thank you very much for your review and comments. All right, moving on to this item was on our previous agenda, but obviously we have a forum to vote on it. Um QA and M um, needs to get a water flow test. Um, there's a fee from Connecticut Water, I believe it's fifteen hundred dollars that needs to be paid as an additional expense to QA and M to get that performed. Um Tom had explained it to us last time. I don't know if there's any more. Do you, Joe, do you need to know any more information about? 10 words. What's that? 10 <laughs> words. Well, it's necessary so they can figure out the sprinkler system. water flow test so we can identify if a sprinkler system is required for the project. And if so, what will that entail? Meaning, are we going to put a fire pump into the project, et cetera? You're not talking about long sprinklers. Yeah, no, fire suppression. All right, can we get, get a motion to approve or make a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. All right, second. I'll second. All right, EJ. All right, any more discussion or discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so our $1,500 has been approved. All right, item 13. Um, was regarding QA and M hiring um, an environment or sorry, a geotechnical services company to do some um, borings on site in the amount of $8,250. Um, we did ask just to get a plan view. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Just we were, we were curious on the location to make sure it made sense. Yeah, what we're looking for with our design, and it does. I took a quick look at it. Um, anyway, you want to add to that? Yeah, the 82.50 that we were able to solicit is less than the budgeted allocation for geotechnical engineering by a considerable amount. So, um, and we're taking it on through our contract so that the town of Madison doesn't have to procure, go out the procurement here. So, um, I think it's a direct cost pass through to at the request of someone on this committee who's associated with finance. So, there you go. Tom, how do they know where to do the borings? So, our structural engineer identifies where they would like to see the borings and presents a sketch, a diagram to the boring company. Yeah, and there's a couple of test fits I think they wanted also at the same time. I think the only caveat here is they had some delays in there potentially if they couldn't get access, but I believe the area is clear and we'll make sure that there's nothing in their way. Yeah. There are no okay. behavioral delays when they show up to drill. Oh so, yeah. Again, 10 words. What's what's the purpose of the drill? So that we can identify what the subsurface soil conditions are in the area where we have to excavate out a portion of the building to provide the elevator pit, the stairs, and access that connects the lower level of the building. They also want some test pits in the courtyard area because we're going to put a new floor that sits on top of that. So we're going to have some bearing that we're adding in that. I want to see what the capacity of that is. It was a part of the project and a part of the original RFQ, and it was identified as it would be an owner. I know there's cost. So. And it's usually generated by your structural engineer, correct? Um, it, it's usually an owner's cost. And no, 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 we're talking about, about the location. Oh, the location generated yeah. by. Generated by the design. What's yeah. that? The design, the way. Right, 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 right. right, right. right. Your structural engineer would, right. would kind of dictate where these things should go. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in, it has its own 
breakout account as mm -hmm. well on the accounting system. So we, yeah. so we won't need them to come back in the future, right? Again, we'll take care of everything at one time. That's correct. So it's one, one, one expense. The invoice payment where it's the expenses need to come from that yeah, that account. Yep. So there, uh, and then for clarification, this is not um, geotechnical testing associated with the um, geothermal well concept. Right. The geothermal well testing would be the actual drilling of a well. Um, so that's that's an additional cost. That'll be another cost at another point. Um, that falls into that budget line item, but it um, that's a different different type of testing. Okay, so the geotech engineering for ten is that, uh, or should this go against the owner's cost estimate? We can talk to you about this. Yeah, later. I just want to make sure it hits the right account. Understood. Where does where does the septic system draining drainage come in? Is that part of this, or is there some other uh, testing required for the, the bleach fields and this, the drainage from the septic system? The septic system design and evaluation is underway, and I don't know what we're going to need yet for that, um, but it will more than likely require some percolation tests and some test bits. But that's separate from the And that's an owner's cost still, or is that? That's a good question. I don't know. I will have to look and see what I signed up for. We'll check on your side too. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I just have an. <laughs> She'll let us know the outcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Can we get a motion to approve? Okay. okay. Um, more questions. Yeah. So um, I did note in looking at the document that um, any damage caused by this work would need to be repaired. At our cost, do you anticipate that there will be damage? No, and typically what damage means is there's a little hole in the asphalt that's that big. So it's a. Uh, it's just we're redoing the whole area. Anyway, so, so good. Okay. <laughs> that was it. Okay. All right. Can we get a motion to approve the uh, estimate for Earth Consulting? So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Joe P. All right. It's approved. All right. I guess we'll move on then to item 14, which is Collier's update. You have an update for us, John? Uh, just a I minor think. one. I yeah. shared a hard copy of the milestone schedule with everybody. Um, if you all have copies of that. And um, to be honest, most of the work is. Uh, Still being carried through with uh, or by QA and M, so uh, this is just uh, reflective of uh, some of the upcoming things. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, the SD drawings are another week or two, so that date may be slightly tweaked. The June fifth uh, date there, I'll coordinate that again with Tom. But um, this week we're in the process of putting together the estimate for the um, <clears throat> to the RFP for the estimating services. And then uh, that will go out uh, to uh, estimators as well as Tom uh, QA and M will have their own estimators, uh, you know, reviewing the drawings. So there will be two to compare and contrast, reconcile for the SD phase. So I, I'm still carrying the, the community center tour. I don't know if you want me to keep those on there for the Wyndham and the, the Brantford sites, or if you want me to take those off. It's you know, totally up to you if that's something you want to have track. <clears throat> I just still leave them in. Okay. And I was Brand I, mean, I, was, I was I was supposed to do Wyndham and uh, schedule Wyndham and Brand Brandford. Uh, I scheduled Wyndham and uh, no one else could make it. Uh, but it's still on my I've been I've been away for a while. Okay. Just let me know when those dates occur and I can plug that. Okay. So um what we'd like to do quickly on the property is can I, can, I, can I do? I have one more question on this. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. It's still on, we're still on here. Um, it's uh, three weeks till our uh, next scheduled meeting. Uh, today is what the twenty third. Next meeting is June nineteenth. 
So it's one of those yeah, times you drink 12. Twelve. Yeah, that's two weeks. It's twelve and okay. Okay. I. Why did I see? So it's, it's actually two. It's actually three weeks. I just three weeks. It's two weeks from. Well, what? It's five weeks. It's just hour. one day short. One day short of three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I just it's, wanted it's, to know if we had a uh, a uh, if if there would be enough progress made at some interim point that we could schedule a, a, a meeting in between. We've uh, we've looked at that at various times uh, to uh, be sure we keep that. We you know, we, we move the schedule on as quickly as possible. We do have a we do have an update meeting on the fifth scheduled, so there'll be conversation there. But that's not with the whole committee. That's just with uh, Dave and I think Joe. So, um, and what day? I month is the fifth. I don't know. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. From Monday. I, I don't know if I'm going to have the type of progress that requires a meeting in between. Um, but if you have a meeting, I will be very happy. What, what's our target date for our town meeting? That's probably something we're going to look at. Right? I That's not going to be a conversation. That's something that, that Bill had referenced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I, I'm not aware of any data. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to make sure we target that at some point. Um, so you're still That's shooting. an information session, not a town meeting. Just want to right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Town meeting just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that would be okay. your discretion. Right. right. And, we are, and maybe once we know what we, we're looking at on the 12th, which we'll have a better understanding of BSD documents are looking live by the 12th, then we'll probably, maybe we should try to set that information meeting. On the 12th, yeah. no, not, not, not well, for yeah. the 12th, but a date during that, you know, during the meeting, we set the date for the information meeting mm -hmm. sometime in I would assume, end of June, July. Well, the committee may want, you as committee may want to consider um, how all that aligns with the cost of main process and the scope realignment process. Um, do you want to have a public information meeting before that, or perhaps you want to have a public information <laughs> after the SD estimating process, so that at least you, the scope that you're presenting is in alignment, general alignment with the budget. Um, so you may want to get the estimates back. You may want to um, go through some committee, a committee meeting or, you know, let's say a reconciliation process, and then get a public information process, public information meeting while in play while the design development work is underway. And that could stretch the schedule a little bit, but it, it's probably a good idea to get the scope of the budget, everything kind of in alignment before you have that public information meeting. I mean, we shooting for like September? Oh, I have to look. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, let's just like to target this. Well, the this, SD this estimates out. are due in June, and then the yeah. reconciliation meeting is June 21st. Yeah. If that slides a little bit, and it may. Okay. Um, a little bit. Um, that would mean you'd have estimates by, um, let's say, no later than the middle of July. Okay. Um, and then if you wanted let's say hypothetically a month to do some evaluation and re revision, um, that would potentially be public information meeting in the middle of August. The question is at that point, is everyone on vacation? Well, that's what right. I was saying. That's what you want to do yeah. once. That's what I was thinking over yeah. the summer, it's, it's not going to be well. I mean, we might be into design development, but at that point you will have um, you know a better understanding of is the scope in alignment with where you're going, and there's less risk presenting the scope at that point to the public, yeah, even though the design overpriced. development is yeah. underway. Yeah. Now, now what what did the schools do? Because they did it wrong. I, I don't know. They did it wrong. Yes, because they're they they left their budget number, their initial uh, budget estimate out before they did any value engineering. And and the, the budget estimate was like ten million dollars yeah. over the um, 
over their uh, over the plan. Well, but, but, so but, so but, but they hadn't time to do any reconciliation. And, and there was a long distance, a and long time. The reporter used some unfortunate nomenclature to describe. I think he used the word cost overrun. Right. Yes. Which I just thought was a we, we poor choice. We shouldn't. And, and, the, and this, I, I, when I said they did it wrong, they, they were doing it right, but they weren't including the public in that discussion. They didn't realize that when they when, when you put a number out to the public like that, yeah. it, uh, before you get to do the value engineering, uh, before you get to do the reconciliation, that that's that's the number that everybody remembers. And, um, well, and what we're going to say is, publicity. when we get that number, we're going to say this is the, this is the start before we re value engineer. Give us time to value engineer because it's still going to be presented in a meeting. So no matter what, if the reporter's watching the meeting, they're going to pick up on it. Or, or to Tom's comment, I think what he was saying: if you have that reconciliation. You do the value engineering, and then you come up with that number, and then you share that. But we'll, but we're doing that whole thing in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. The we're value engineering. So it, it, and that's oh, okay. yeah. So all of the meetings are public. So therefore, the well, the the same thing could happen. So we really want to say ahead of time, this is our starting point. Give us time to revamp to do the value engineering. This is not going to go over budget. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think we can change the, 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 the way the facts are presented. We can only, what we can do is we can explain them better when we start, yeah. right from the beginning to Joan's point. Yeah. But the, the, I mean, the, 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 the number's gonna come out on the first estimate, probably it's gonna be high. There's probably things we're gonna have to, the, the, there are things we're gonna have to do to bring that number down to some viable number. And, and we need to get out in front of that process rather than let the first number go out without the explanation that, hey, this is normal. This is what, this is the way of business works. Uh, and we can't- uh, the yeah. Well, that's part of the process is, is reconciliation is two estimates. So right. we need to get that we going need to get that set out. apart so that yeah. we can see where we're at. But we can't, we'll, we'll be, we can't just see where we're at because well, we're not just because the, number, the number goes out to the public in the public. So we have we have to be able to be sure we we, we well, understand. When, we if, if, the if number, when the number is presented in the public meeting, we say this is the pre-reconciliation number. This is not the hard number. We are, let us do our job, kind of thing. Well, the whole thing. idea though is when we get this estimate, dude, we're going to have lines, right, with with dollar. So we're going to have a detailed conversation of which line items are within our budget and which ones aren't. So we'll have. A, a conversation about which items we need to look at to address the value engineer take out revise. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of part of the part of the process, right? right. That's why we have two estimates, right? So we have and there's two so, parts, right? We do this twice. We well, you're going to do it after you're going to you're going to reconcile yeah. now, and then you're going to after sixty percent, ninety or hundred, you're right. going to do it. We're going to do it again. Do design, 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 design. So we want to make sure after the thirty percent or whatever we're at that we're within we're within our budget, within ten percent, whatever our value is that we're mm -hmm. targeting. After that, then and then Tom will move forward to 60% and then we're going to do the process again and make sure we're right. still in alignment. So as he progresses design, obviously detail gets added, costs get added, and you'll get better quotes. Because you remember, they're only going to be estimating off of what we have at 30%, right? That 60% when a lot of detail gets in there. That's when vendors and, and, and these estimators will get better quotes, right? especially from like subcontractors. Right now, they're just going to give you a, a quote well, the you know, plumbing costs X amount per foot, whatever, you'll get like an estimate. Once it gets revived or gets refined, then we're going to be able to lock in our numbers better. But and the point is, we have to have those explanations ready up front. What's I'm saying, we have to have a right, detailed right. conversation of how we're going to present the information right. and what our process is going to be moved forward. Right. Exactly. So I do this every day. We don't want to give anybody. We don't want to give the public a a a, a false uh, a number that's no. not going to be correct. No. Uh, we have to explain it, Joe. We have to be able to explain. Yeah. And we will. All right, you done with that item? Oh, no, 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 no sorry. So, no. Collier's update from the finance side. Do you want to see what um, we'd like to do? You have it. Okay. okay. So, um, we'd like to, right now, um, when the invoices come in, they'll go from um, uh, Jacqueline out to you guys and to us. And what we'd like to see, which is similar to what is done um, for the school building committee, which is you guys go through those. You stamp them saying yes, yes. we approve. 
then this kind of piece of paper comes to us each meeting saying, here's the list of your invoices. We, we say they're okay. Then um, we approve them on that level. And then um, you sign the document or one of the members of the committee signs the document saying, yes, it's approved and that goes to finance. And that physically will get brought into the finance department. Slide in there. So we want, so, to, we, want to, we want to do exactly as the school. So if you give you guys can okay. take a look the at school process as well. The school process, and then if on a quarterly basis, what would we like to do? We want to do the GL. Well, yeah. So um, we're proposing because sometimes invoices come in, like some of these legal invoices that may not come through Collier's. Mm -hmm. um, we're proposing to um, send you all a download okay. from the general ledger. Okay. Okay, that's, that's it. Our accounts, sure. just to be sure that you all have the same records that we do. Right. And then okay. if you could share, having gotten that, if you could share back um, your report, you know, your, your, your multi tab report, which is quite helpful. Which you're familiar with. Which I'm very familiar yeah. with. Okay. That'd be great. So you want to do that quarterly? I think quarterly. I don't think we need to do it monthly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at, at least in this case, maybe well, during the craziness of construction, we might want to tighten that up a little bit. We'll check back and do a year or two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? We good? Okay. Is there anything that, that I have to sign? Uh, is there anything that requires my signature? Because that's one of the things we, we went through with the contract. There was some some point. Was that was that drawings and invoices, or just drawings, or just invoices? Well, right now for our side of things, you'll sign off on the invoices as basically you're saying that the board, uh, we as the yes. economy building have, have done it. Or if, if you're not available, then they will do it. And if both of you aren't there, one of us will do it because we're on the finance side of things. So, uh, am I supposed to sign this right now? No, that's, that's no, an no, example. Just, just, just an example of school. Yeah, right. 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 That's right. 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 So every, right. Yeah, but every meeting now, if there's any outstanding invoices that you guys have approved, That's the this is they'll bring this pack. This will be part of the um, be package the on the agenda. Okay. So this package will come with the agenda, and you'll say, okay, you can print off the top sheet, sign it, and then hand it over to Jean, and Jean will follow it into Jacqueline. Or but that we have to meet after we, we meet the once you approve, then you just sign. Yeah. We approve, approve as a committee. You, we approve you, as a committee. Yes. You sign you saying, sign. And I sign one of us signs saying, yes. You, as a finance sub, subgroup, you review. We, were, we approve it as a committee, and that's what I sign. So what we decided, what we, this is, this is basically, um, this helps us so that the finance subcommittee, we're going to be getting, for instance, We'll get all the invoices when Colliers gets the invoices if anything's been sent directly to the town. And then when this package comes out, if there's an invoice missing, then we'll say, oh, is there a reason why this isn't in the package? And you can say, yes, we wanted to do this. this, this, this. Questions. Or we didn't receive a copy. Or we didn't receive a copy or whatever. So th that's way there. We're going to be basically reconciling to what they're going to be approving because we'll have seen them ahead of time. So it should, it should. The process that we worked out with the finance department, I think, will work well. So I think, and it's very, it's identical to what's going on with the school building committee, except that there's not a staffer getting CC'd on the, it's the two of us getting CC'd. So we're just not taking that spot, so to speak. Works. All right, we good? Yep. All right, QAM already gave our up his update. Um, public comment. All right. So, with uh, what's the term we use to end the meeting? Hearing no objections. Hearing no objections. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Thanks for attending. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. If anybody objects, we tackle.